So I just got done reading this book on leadership. And one of the things that it had in there was this discussion of having peer mentors, like people that you can reach out to that are that are in your league, uh, people that you really strongly respect, uh, people that encourage you and bring you up so that you can all become better leaders. And I thought about a way that I can incorporate this into my photography. And I was like, what peer, who would be the best person that I could possibly bring on to F64 Academy to help me in my photography? And as I was going through my list of photographers, I thought to myself, Gavin, Gavin Hardcastle, he'd be perfect for this channel to come in and help me with some critiques that I need on some of my portfolio images. Are you serious? Well, I, I, I guess I respect you, but um, I mean, we're, we're peers at least. So let's go with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought it was a bit rich when you said in the same league. I mean, let's be honest. Right. Yeah. But, you know, if you want a bit of help with your composition, um, I'm willing to do that and help you out with that. But uh, the first thing I would say is just to remove the blindfolds that you've obviously been wearing while you've been doing some of your photography, because uh, some of those comps are quite questionable. But let's well, let's load a few let, up. Let, and yeah, let's let the, them speak for themselves then before you get <clears throat> yeah. too far. Now, when we talk about this, Gavin, I, I, I would I would prefer constructive criticism if you can afford that you know constructive building me up uh, if you can you know like, try to you know don't 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 just like patronize me or anything like that but you know, just build me up a little bit if you could i'm just gonna be honest that's that's all i'm okay. gonna do so honesty is good honesty is always the all best right. policy let's just let's go with honesty god help you is this a joke no, this is an image I really legitimately want some constructive critique on. No, it's a joke, isn't it? You're, you're taking the piss now. Come on. No. Well, I mean, I, I like the color. Well, it's got all of the colors. I mean, which one? You know, it's like it's like a rainbow times 2000. Um, what, what year was this? I mean, this, this isn't a recent image, is it? This is old. <laughs> You know, the time frame is not necessarily important. Just w whatever you would say about this. I mean, All right, if you well, could say something constructive. Let me try and be constructive here. Uh, look, I'll just rub my eyes a little bit because I don't want it to bleed because it's a little bit um, fatiguing, <laughs> should we say. Um, so basically, it's a picture of, I'm guessing, a tree in a field. Um, so would I be right in assuming that the main subject is that tree there with this looks like a swing hanging off it, maybe? Correct. Yeah, there's, a, there's some random ropes. Yeah, but it's a tree in a field. So I think in terms of how you've balanced things out, where you've got like quite a small strip of, you know, the, the land portion of the image, and then you've devoted more of the, the frame to the colorful sky and the tree, that's good. That's a good balance. I would have done the same thing cutting off your main subject which is the tree you kind of got it sliced off there that's that's not good you know really i don't know maybe you did that because there was some ugly building to the side of it or something like that i don't know but uh, i'd always try and make sure that my main subject is always cleanly displayed in the image and not sliced off that's good yep yep that's definitely a tree in the field there was nothing to the right so i could definitely take that as constructive criticism for yeah sure. so i mean that's th those are my compositional tips uh, as far as post-processing goes, I mean, that was obviously done before you actually learned how to use Photoshop, I'm guessing, right? For sure. Yeah, this this was actually a test, Gavin. I wanted to make sure that I would get good quality constructive <laughs> uh -huh. critique from you. You, so, were, you, were, you were testing yeah. me, eh? You were testing yeah. my integrity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was back in 2012 when I was like headstrong and drinking the HDR Kool-Aid. Actually, you know... <laughs> Back then, I actually read one of your HDR blogs on uh, digital photography school. Are you trying to blame me for this? It, it, it could have been, but let's move oh, on. Come on, that's that's just not acceptable. But all right, fair enough. Uh, okay, so you, you're happy with that critique. Okay, next yeah. image. Let me give you a real one here. What do, you, what do you think of this? Well, clearly this is in a different league to the last one. This is an actual composition. And... Um, I kind of like this this image. So I really like the colors in the sky. I like the subject matter. Um, in terms of composition, what I would have changed is to me, I would have given more real estate to what is most interesting in this image. And if you, if you look at this image, you can break it into three parts. So you've got the sky. That's where all the color is. 
you've then got these do you i mean those those are rocks what would you call those pinnacles what what are those called <laughs> It's in the Badlands, so they're like these like mud. I don't even know what you call it. It's like layers of like muddy. Yeah, rock, but it's not even rock. It's like dirt. Yeah, but it's it's a hill, right? That's the mm -hmm. middle of your image, and to me, that's by far the more interesting element. And you've got 50, a whole fifty percent of your frame devoted to just that foreground. And I would ask myself, as as nice as it is, is that foreground? more interesting than those beautifully multicolored layers of rock in the middle of the frame and to me i would have shifted that balance i would have perhaps moved a little bit further towards the edge and just featured a little bit less of that foreground so so that it's not quite 50 percent i would have perhaps chosen a, a longer focal length just to make those rocks in the distance bigger in the frame so it's it's just it's a it's a, a subject balance issue that I have with this image. But overall, I think it's a good image. I just feel like the priorities for me would have been different. But you know, maybe you are super excited about this this foreground, this ridge, and that little green bush. For me, I think that that background is far more interesting, far more compelling, and far more unique than a pile of dirt. So for sure. No, That's... and I think I was actually looking for, you know, good quality constructive criticism on this because this is one of those things where I couldn't let go of the foreground. You know what I mean? I'm looking at the foreground. I like it a lot. And what I liked was the balance between the magenta and the green and the blue and the orange. And I got so, I guess, absorbed with that green and, and uh, magenta and the blue and the orange that I showcased it that way. But looking at your perspective and your point of view, I think maybe even cropping it in a little bit might help that too. So... It's yeah. definitely helpful. So one thing you can do when you've, when you've got a scene like this is use the hand filter. I call it the hand filter. And you basically get your hand on the back of your camera and you cover up one half of what you're seeing on the back of that screen, whether it's the actual live view or whether it's a shot that you're just playing back, cover it up with half your hand. Well, sorry, with your hand, cover up half the frame. And if you see that whatever you've covered up, you don't really miss it that much and whatever's left is far more compelling. That's going to give you a clue as to what you need to do to your composition. And then you could flip to the other side of the frame, cover up the other half and whatever's left down there, if that's kind of boring, like if that's just like a little pile of dirt or if, if you're in a, a river, it's just some black water or whatever, you could probably do without that, which will then guide you towards angling yourself so that your frame is filled with deliciousness and less of it is devoted to kind of like a, you know, a bit of dirt. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I could definitely, definitely and, see and, that. And I do talk at length about this whole topic of subject balance in my composition course called Tricks of the Trade. Huh. Okay. So nice shameless plug for you there. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. I, yeah, I can you, see that. Oh, you know, you helped me out, so you can definitely have that. that oh look, that there's a there's maybe. a there's a graphic, there's a banner just showing up in the in the screen there. You, you this know. is how are, get this off, dude. Yeah. This is my channel. How did you get that in my channel? How, how did you magic? Whatever. All right, next one. Let's stop with that, okay? All right, next up. Okay, so uh, never seen this this shot before, Blake. No, uh, never, never. It's about, it's like Mesa Arch. <clears throat> yeah, it really is. Um, okay, so there's nothing bad at all about this composition. Um, it's one of those places where if I was to go there, I would really struggle to find something different, try and do something in a different way because everybody's got a shot of this. Um, but I think what I would perhaps have tried to have done with this is a try uh, maybe you could have done it in post processing maybe you actually got these frames but to me the light on uh, is that el capitan is that what it's called yes so the light that you see on el capitan that in anybody's shot that you see of this it's all about that stripe of light that you get on that that cliff there i would have liked to have seen that reflected in the water <clears throat> and even though i know that the water is moving you can depending on if you've got a polarizer, so perhaps you were polarizing it a little bit too much, or maybe you didn't even have a polarizer, it's dif difficult to tell, but I, I would have perhaps taken the polarizer off or just turned it so that more of that reflection was showing in that water, and that would have doubled the amount of color, doubled the amount of impact and contrast in the middle of the frame there. 
and perhaps I would have, if, if I'd have been able to achieve that, perhaps I would have zoomed in a little bit more and excluded some of those peaks that are up on the top right. Because if you look at El Capitan, it's got that lovely red glow. And then if you look on the other side of the valley, you can see that same glow on one of the other peaks there. So whenever I'm taking a, a shot like this, I'm always asking myself, what is it that's really interesting me about this scene? And so to me, that lovely bit of glow on those peaks there deserves more screen real estate than perhaps that big cliff that you can see on the on the top right there. So I, I would have used a longer focal length. I, I would have zoomed in and filled the frame more with those dynamic elements and just kind of discard some of the other stuff that's perhaps not quite as dynamic. Um, you know, like I said, it's, it's difficult to get anything original at Yosemite. Everyone's shot the same shot. So you really have to try and think about Okay, what am I going to do that's just going to be the most striking and powerful image? And so I think if you'd have just, again, prioritized those vibrant elements, filled the frame with those and a bit less of the less vibrant elements, it would slap me in the face a bit more. For sure. This is definitely the get out of your car, walk down to the stream or river and shoot. <laughs> and that's all you got. It's, all, it's the Valley View. So it's that one, you know, iconic shot that you hope that something in the environment is going to change. And, you know, the snow was there. So we had that. But I can definitely agree with that. After doing your hand trick, I can see the most important elements. I mean, it's almost like I think why this did so well on uh, Instagram is because it was a square crop. So yeah. it was actually cutting off those those ends on the either side that you know, like you're talking about so yeah that, that's good i like that well let me yeah. ask you another question uh, mm -hmm. when you take a shot like this mm -hmm. are you willing to get your feet wet oh yeah so what i would have been tempted to do is let's look at the foreground elements so you see this rock that you have in the foreground there that big rock mm -hmm. that to me is not as interesting as those those rocks that are in the middle of the river there that have got these lovely bits of snow on top of them so I would have been tempted to have just gone out into the water, got super low in the water and filled the frame a little bit more with that reflection that we talked about, plus the snow covered rocks. I would have replaced these rocks that you have with the snow covered rocks. You're just simply replacing it just because they're snow covered. So they're a bit more interesting than the ones that you've got in the foreground there. And that's often what's required is that just that extra little bit of commitment, that extra little bit of effort, even if it makes, you know, means getting your feet wet, makes you uncomfortable. Just take those, those, go to those extra lengths to create something special. And that's something that I try to do with every single shot that I take. It's like, okay, I've got the easy shot. We all start with that. How can I go that one step further and just make it, make it just a little bit better, make it just smack you in the boat race a little bit harder than it does there. <laughs> I should have done that because then if I did that, I would have made all the other photographers I was with have an interesting thing in the foreground, which would have been me. <laughs> well, yeah, that, I guess that's the other thing, right? Is if you've got 20 other togs there, you can't, you know, unless unless they're all up for it and you say, right, I'll, yeah. I'll just go in there for two minutes. But, but when the light's kicking off like that, you're just going to upset people, aren't you? Right, especially when you're instructing, you got to throw a spin on it where it's like, hey guys, you want to see, see a great shot? I'm going to get in there, all right, with my camera, and you guys take a picture. It's going to be great because it'll put everything in perspective. Meanwhile, you walk away with the best picture. So, yeah, I'll do that next time. <laughs> well, I mean, a, a professional photography instructor <laughs> that's really committed would never do that. You know, you'd, you'd let your students take their shots first. And then when they've finished with the best light, you just say, would you mind if I take a shot? And then you, you take your shot. I mean, that's, you know, that's what professionals do. Blake. Yeah, I've seen I've seen how you professionally tell people what the camera settings on their camera mean too. So Yeah. I'll also, stick with what, what I know. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's WB? Why bother? <laughs> yeah, ISO. Increasingly <laughs> outcome. That's why yeah, I, I like that one. Because yeah, that is true actually. Exactly. Okay, did that did that help in any way? Was that was that, I wasn't too harsh with, with that one? No, it's perfect. All right. Perfect. I like it. I think you're doing you're doing great. You really helped me out. Yeah. Let's go to the last one. Oh, you saved the worst till last. Sorry, the sorry, the best till last. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. right, all right. right. <clears throat> so um again, the, this is something that I talk at length about with my composition made easy course, chapter one, finding the shot. Oh Dude, look, there's a there's a graphic. I did this once on your last video, a, and here you are 
plug so in your courses. Look like at that graphic on the online. screen there. That's that's really get yeah. that. Don't smack it away. That's just, there's, a, there's a link in the description below. There, there will be a link, won't there? Like maybe if you do a good job on this. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. So this one, I, I don't think you're gonna like this, right? I'm, okay. I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have Hit to. Me hard. I have to bring the Simon Cowell back into this. So technically, it's nothing wrong with this, right? If you look at the, you know, you do the whole 50-50 thing with your hand filter. I like the balance, you know, you've got 50% devoted to the sky where you've got the galactic core. Looks nice, tastefully processed for you. I mean, that's normally it's retina shredding, but that's, <laughs> that's quite tame for you. And then the same with the foreground, you've got these, these rocks and they fill about 50% of the frame. Um, the only thing I would say is what, what is your image about? What is your main subject? What, what is this shot about, Blake? Feel free to answer at any time. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm, 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 you know, you put me on spot. I was supposed to be the one putting you on spot, but here you're, yeah, I guess that's part of critique. So, um, you know, I, I think it was just about how the Milky Way is spilling right into this with, it's like a stream with these little tiny little waterfalls, like the Milky Way is just kind of spilling into there and like coming towards you. That's kind of the concept I was going for here. Yeah, I get that. So let me ask you this question then, <clears throat> based mm -hmm. on what you just told me, if I asked you, what would you think is, what would you think is more interesting, a spilling waterfall or a big pile of squarish rocks? The waterfall. Which I can just kind of see in the distance as like this tiny little thing way off over there. But what I do see filling most of the frame is some nondescript, very large square shaped rocks. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think if you'd have just kind of moved forward, maybe 50 feet to where I can just see that, that little trickle just kind of coming down over that lip of that rock there and filled your frame with that. And especially with being shooting vertical, which looks like you're kind of like 16 millimeter or something like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly 16. You could have filled the frame with that small little trickle and made it look like a quite dramatic waterfall and then balance that with the galactic core. And I think that would have been a more striking composition than this pile of rocks. You know, that if the rocks had been more ornate, you know, if they'd have had some more, mm -hmm. some more texture and contrast, maybe there's some cool lichens on them or cracks, then it would have made sense. But to me, it's kind of like, <clears throat> again, if, if you cover up the top half of that frame, what have you got left? It's, it's kind of like, just a pile of nondescript boulders. They're not that interesting. Whereas I think if you'd have just got, got that little waterfall in there, could have been a quite an epic shot. Uh, but in terms of how you process it, like I said, quite tasteful for you, Blake. I have to say, it, it's it's like you know something about processing or something. Oh, thanks. I'll take that one. I did, I did a bunch of them with the water because there's many little teeny tiny waterfalls that are spilling into here. And I went in a little bit closer, but I noticed that the closer I went to them, the bigger the gap got between the Milky Way and the waterfall. So it went from Milky Way and then a big band of black and then the waterfall in order to get it all in there. So I pulled back and went further away and just went with the rocks rather than the waterfall for the location. Yeah, and sometimes that's the physical constraints that you have to work in mean that you just can't get low enough into that position to balance it all out. And that's that's the puzzle that we face in composition, mm. which again, I, I talk about at length in chapter three of my composition made easy course. And thank Form God this and is the last. Flow. This is the last one, huh? This is the last, last Oh, hang on. No, I can see a graphic. There's another graphic there. <laughs> Look at that. There you go. Link in the description below. Right. If, yeah, well, I guess you, you did a decent enough job on this one that I'll, I will link that on there. Oh, will you? So, oh, thanks, mate. Yeah, Cheers. Yeah. I appreciate that. No, I, I do appreciate all the advice you gave. It, it was, actually was a lot more constructive than what I was expecting. Um, so, yeah, I like it. A bit cheeky. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Yeah, it's, it's been your absolute pleasure and I would say your honor to, to have me teach you. Right, right, Gavin. Um, well, w with that being said, how how can I repay you for, for this? I mean, this has been a lot of your time, so. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, obviously you're gonna pay me for it, but uh, I guess in addition to the money that you'll give me, hopefully, for this, um, I could do with a little bit of help 
with my selections. You know, you know, I struggle with selections in Photoshop, right? Oh, you do. You struggle with a lot of things in Photoshop. But if selections is the one thing, then we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, what if you come over onto my channel and we'll do a video where I challenge you with some of my regular problems that I have with selections and see if you can nail them and maybe teach me a few new tricks. Absolutely, let's do it. Yeah, you're gonna do it? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, it'll be fun. Well, I don't know about fun, but all right, neither, prepare neither yourself. Do I, but that's what we say when we're trying to be cordial with one another. All right, well, I'll see you over on my channel, but I tell you what, you don't be plugging any of your courses. I would never no, do that. I would never do anything like that. Not Definitely not the way you did here, for sure. All right, then. See you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. We'll do this video. Okay. Sounds good. All right. See, See you soon. there. Yeah. That's weird. Uh, what yeah, can we do? <laughs> <laughs>